Shut up and sit down. Hey guys, Sandy from Big Mouse Workshop. Today I'm doing a model called Halloween Jack from a couple of friends of ours from a, a company called Daruma. Now this is a, a model from Slade, a special character. Um, and I've seen some artwork of him and I thought I'd do my own version of it. So I start off with a black prime obviously and German grey by Army Painter, sorry by Vallejo onto the uh, armour sections. This was then highlighted up with the airbrush with standard grey, working just the upper reaches and trying to uh, add a little bit of highlighting. I'm doing a lot of highlighting work on this. I'm doing something a little bit different and I couldn't quite decide what colours I was going, for, going to work with. After that, I uh, top highlighted it with um, Vallejo Air Pale Blue Grey. I just kept the uh, coat completely thin so um, I wasn't going to give any real thickness to the paintwork. I've had a lot to work with. And it's quite an interesting thing this because obviously it's got a uh, pumpkin for a head. That made things a little bit different and uh, I quite like the figure. There's a lot, a lot of little details on it what um, a lot of people wouldn't necessarily uh, see on some figs like buttons and such. Uh, so I, I did actually quite enjoy painting this fig for um, multiple reasons. A little bit different. So as you can see I'm putting the pale grey blue on uh, just up again as a highlighting shade. Highlighting colour even. Uh, and just again at the top sections of the armour plating including its chest plate. Now I do apologise about the editing. Uh, this was my first attempt at editing ever. But uh, hopefully I've done something what resembles a functional video. Uh, I will be getting better as I do more videos uh, for you guys. And as you can see we've got a better camera now. So um, both myself and Dodge can do decent, uh, quality picture quality, decent picture quality videos. So uh, as you can see it's a very interesting looking fig. Um, quite an arrogant sort of pose. There's not a lot of movement in the fig, which is a shame, but they are a starting company, so um, it's understandable that they're uh, posing. At this point, it's about a year old, this fig, so they've actually got a lot more interesting figs out now. But um, this is the uh, only one what I happen to have to hand. I'm still working that um, pale grey blue uh, in the upper sections just to uh, really pick out the highlighted, the highlighted areas. I'm going to be doing a lot of work with um, glazing on the uh, armour sections. Um, so, here we go, we're uh, using the glazing now. Um, all I'm starting off with is a standard GW uh, blue wash, I think it's Drakenhof Nightshade. And I start off with uh, just painting it into the uh, recesses just now, this is a thin uh, wash um, mixed with Lamia Medium. I use a, quite a lot of Lamia Medium on this fig. And I'm doing multiple thin layers into the recesses to start off with, just to get that initial darkness into the area where uh, I overwent, where, where I oversprayed with the airbrush. And here we are, I'm doing the same again. Now, once again, it's the GW Drakenhof Nightshade. I'm further washed into the deeper recesses. I'm pulling the um, paint further up this time, just to extend the shaded, shaded areas, but because it's a second layer, the deeper recesses will be darker. As you can imagine, take your time with this, you don't want to uh, ruin what, what could be um, coming up some nice glazing work. But once again I'm adding even more um, wash to the darker sections just to really make them um, transition shine. Now 
Now here I've put a bit of green into the wash. It's again, it's uh, it's army paint a uh, green shade, and that's going into uh, the uh, recesses as well. And um, it just adds a little bit of a, uh, ch a slight change to the colour transition. Um, make, makes the um, Make, make, makes the washes look a bit more interesting. So the last thing you want is a uh, a dull, uh, flat looking transition. Now as you can see I'm starting to extend the paintwork over the uh, armour plates now with the with the steady glazers. And I'm doing that over um, a period of many glazers over the armour plates, slowly extending the uh, painted wash into onto the lower sections of the armor plate and slow, uh, ever so slowly pulling it up the plate sections as well. Here I'm adding a touch of army painted dark tone uh, which could be replaced with non oil um, just to really catch the um, muscle structure on uh, the armor plating and the real deep sections of the uh, shaded areas. Just to it just makes them stand out a little bit more uh, before I go back to doing the glazing work of the armor. As you can imagine, uh, this isn't done uh, quickly. Very slow, uh, slow process to, to uh, use glazing, but it's something I find quite enjoyable. So now I'm using a, a touch of pale blue grey uh, in the highlighted regions just to add a, a touch of um, contrast at the top, make it look a bit more. Uh, vibrant, bringing them transitions out even more, and I'm mixing that uh, whilst it's on the figure with um, army paint of grey, uh, just to blend it in a bit. Because uh, I believe I uh, picked initially um, picked the colour a bit strong, placed it a little bit strong on the legs. So now I'm going around the um, upper areas with that mix. Uh, to add some highlight to uh, um, that initially flat looking armour. Once that's down, again I go back with the pale grey blue and just to really touch up those uh, top highlights um, before I go back to uh, any more glazing. Now the reason this for that, uh, doing it that way is uh, you can use the glazing to tone down the highlights and uh, it'll, it'll also um, add additional transition to the glazed regions. Now this was going to be a video about um, painting uh, some Infinity stuff, however I couldn't get the paintwork to work all right, so I wasn't happy with, uh, with, with the video. So you wind up with this guy instead. <laughs> it's, uh, we all make mistakes from time to time, and uh, that was one of mine. I couldn't get the um, model to look the way I wanted it to. So now I'm adding some more strong tone, yeah, strong tone into the deeper recesses. Now Strong Tone is basically the army paint equivalent to Agrax Earth Shade, uh, which you could use uh, just the same. And I'm just painting that right into the deeper sections again, just to um, define the areas. 
and again, as you see now, I'm starting to put some more glazing work up the armour plates with the blue and uh, some of the grey as well. So now I'm starting on the cloak. Now apologies for the camera angle. Um, the coat itself um, was done in the same style as the artwork, which is a sort of a USA flag. So I started off with a um, Vallejo Gamer Blue uh, for the blue sections, uh, which you should now be able to see, uh, which was done on the shoulder pads, uh, alternate stripes, and on the, uh, the other stripes, on the red stripes, uh, we'll start off with uh, gory red, again by Vallejo, uh, which I find I think is a great start colour. It's a really rich red with a nice sort of deep shade to it. And again, as you can see, they, they were done on alternate uh, panels. The remaining panels will start off with. Uh, pale grey um, to act as a base for the white so you've got the sort of the stars and stripes sort of um, style of um, coat going on now, I apologise to any American uh, American viewers we have um, it's just my version of what I think the stars and stripes cause would be um, I don't know if it, exactly what they, uh, what you would use. The head kit was given a base of Rhinox hide, um, which initially seemed like a good idea. Uh, then I changed my mind and once I uh, started to paint it, I was like, no, uh, I'm going to have to do something different with that. There we are, going over the, uh, white, se uh, the white sections with a, a very light grey. Um, which then highlighted up with off-white uh, by Vallejo, uh, um, which is part of the Vallejo game range. Uh, as you can see, my brushes uh, definitely seem better days. So I'm looking at needing some new brushes. I'm still trying to be as neat as possible, uh, so I don't have to do too much patching up. There we are, I'm using uh, off-white as the uh, initial highlight on the white colour. There's a shoddy camera angle. Nice look at um, a cork stand on my thumb. Uh, whilst uh, I'm faffing about. Ah, and there we go. I'm back into uh, doing some more glazing work uh, on the arm plates. Again, adding more blue tone to it. Getting that sort of blue-grey uh, colour what I eventually went for. Um, very, very gently, very slowly. Uh, no brush. I was using a very fine brush for this because I wanted to keep the uh, things exactly where I put them. And I believe these were, uh, these were also neat at the time. I wanted to um, keep the tone as uh, rich as possible so I could um, spread it uh, nicely. Adding that blue up the armor plates. Okay, thank you for watching. I uh, hope you like this video. Um, don't forget to give us a big old thumbs up if you like and want to see some more. Check us out on Patreon and uh, I'll see you next time for part two. Bye bye.